Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Click the link in the description below to get a two month free trial. Plant-based cheese. It's one of my most requested videos. It's something that I've wanted to tackle for a long time, but I didn't know how I would be able to add to the already plethora of recipes that are out there. I didn't know what I could do to make plant-based cheese better than what's already there. But then I thought, why don't we take this journey together and see what makes a plant-based cheese taste great. Find the ingredients that make plant-based cheese taste better, taste more like a real cheese, stretch more like a real cheese, have the same textures and chew as a real cheese. So we're gonna do quite a few videos over this cheese series, starting mostly with taste. I wanna find all of the ingredients that make plant-based cheeses taste like real cheese. So in the very first video of this cheese series, we're gonna be working with something that I've tried before and absolutely love. I used it recently in the Impossible Cheese Steak video, and that is Chow. Now, chow originally is not the vegan cheese that you see in the grocery stores. It is a fermented tofu. So that's what we're gonna start with today. We're gonna ferment some tofu over the next few weeks and then turn it into a cheese. Now, chow has an almost like blue cheese-like taste, but when used proportionally with different ingredients, it can taste more like a provolone or like a sharp Swiss. So let's start with this fermentation process and ferment some tofu and see how cheesy we can get with fermented tofu. So I'm gonna start with a 14 ounce block of organic firm tofu. This is not like a medium firm, not medium, just a firm tofu. Uh, we're gonna just open this up and drain it and we're not gonna press it right off the bat. I got a pan that's about half filled with water. We're gonna bring this to a boil. We're also gonna add about two big heavy pinches of salt. Now the whole point of this first step is to kind of help draw some of the water out of the tofu, but it's also to sterilize the tofu. Because we're fermenting and we're dealing with bacterias and mold, we wanna make sure that only the good mold and good bacterias are on the tofu. If you're not really sure about sterilization or anything, I'm not the source for that. I'll leave some links in the description below. Okay, our water is at a boil. We're gonna go ahead and just add our block of tofu right into the water here. So we're just gonna let this boil in a rolling boil for about four or five minutes, that's it. Okay, so now that the tofu has been boiling for about five minutes, we're gonna go ahead and just kill this heat. I'm gonna use a silicone spatula. Now we've knocked off a little bit of the, the tofu pieces that were like broken here, that's okay. And we're just gonna place right on a paper towel. Ha, 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 hot. So at this point, I'm gonna take this paper towel, wrap it around it. It is picking up quite a bit of water. Now, if you have a tofu press like I have, you can use that. If not, just use some books, use some heavy weights, an iron skillet works really well for pressing tofu. We're just gonna drop this guy right in the tofu press, which has been cleaned thoroughly. And then at this point, we're just gonna tighten up. Now, the tofu has softened up from being boiled, so we're not gonna tighten up too much. So let's let this guy dry off for about 45 minutes. So just a little heads up, about halfway through the 45 minutes, I am gonna remove the paper towel. So fermented tofu goes by a lot of different names. Fermented bean curd, bean curd cheese, tofu cheese, soy cheese, preserved tofu. It's known by quite a bit of different things. And that's because it's been around for a while, like a seriously long time, 179 to 122 BC. Now there is a few different varieties. There is white fermented tofu, which is the most common. You usually don't even say it, it's just fermented tofu. There's red fermented tofu, which usually has different oils, sometimes chili flakes or chili oil is added to the fermentation broth. And then lastly, there is stinky fermented tofu. Now stinky fermented tofu is essentially just white fermented tofu, but taken a lot farther. White fermented tofu can take just a few days to a few weeks, where a stinky fermented tofu can take up to six months. The stuff that we're gonna be using in the cheese is just gonna take a few weeks. Okay, so this has been sitting for about an hour and a half. It's squeezed very nicely. And I got my glove back on. Everything's been wiped down. We're gonna remove the tofu. And then I'm gonna slice this into about eight cubes. So we're gonna take each one of these blocks and set them on a paper towel with some space in between them. I'm just gonna use my thumb as the guide for space. So about a half inch or so. Do another layer of paper towel on the top. And then at this point, we're going to just cover this with some plastic wrap, just to allow no bad bacteria to get in. 
I'm gonna allow this to sit for about two to three days. Uh, also, my set here, this room, is a very warm room. So make sure that you have this in a warm room. I know it's going into winter time, so that might be a little tough, but you could put it like in the oven if you're not gonna be baking. And we're gonna let this sit and ferment, dry out. Okay, so it's been three days. Let's check this out. I believe the tofu is gonna be nice and dried. Yeah, we got some nice, it's like a yellow color. It has a little bit of a smell to it, a little sour-like smell. The next step is to make our brine. So for our brine, we have one cup of filtered water. I'm gonna use one cup of mirin. Now you could use like a vodka, just go to a quarter cup. I'm gonna be using this cooking wine, it's cheaper. And it's actually a little sweet, so it adds a little bit different flavor to it. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of sugar, and then I'm also gonna use a tablespoon of kosher salt. Let's bring this to a boil, and then we're gonna prep our tofu in a jar, in a nice clean jar. So this is a sterilized mason jar. I'm just gonna drop the tofu in. If you do see any mold on this, make sure you remove the mold. This is at a boil. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. I'm gonna let this cool down for just a few minutes. I don't wanna pour it in at boiling temperature, but I'm gonna let it cool for like 15, 20 minutes. Once it's cooled down for that amount of time, I'm gonna pour it into this, to the jar here, and then we're gonna put it in a shelf away from direct sunlight. It doesn't have to be a super warm shelf, but a nice shelf direct away from anything. And we're gonna let this sit for the next month. Now, after about a week to two weeks, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of sesame oil to this just to give it a little bit more flavor. So today's video is all about learning how to make a vegan plant-based cheese. And I'm always excited about learning new things. And that's why I'm really excited about Skillshare. See, Skillshare is an online learning community that empowers you to accomplish real growth. So you can make 2020 a year where you get to explore new things, new skills, go deeper into your passions, and get lost in your creativity with Skillshare's online classes. I've been able to take a few different classes on Skillshare and still able to make a lot of videos. They have everything from illustration, graphic design, photography. They have so many different classes, you'll find just about whatever you're looking for. So Monica and I are getting ready to move. We just got a new house. So I'm really excited about this class by Emily Henderson called Style Your Space, Creative Tips and Techniques for Interior Design. And I'm really hoping it's gonna help me make a cooler looking set. It seems like it's an awesome class. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So make sure that you click the link in the description below to get two months of premium membership so you can start exploring your creativity. <laughs> Okay, so it has been a month. This is ready. I put the sesame oil in about a week ago. It has a strong sesame oil kind of smell. I didn't put that much in. A lot of the tofu uh, got broken down, but we got some chunks here. Now you can see it's, it smells very, um, uh, very acidic, almost like alcoholy, and I think that's from the wine. It's very soft, I'm getting this all over my finger, it's very almost like spreadable. But this itself is very, uh, it's very potent, it's very strong, and it definitely has a flavor that you would wanna get used to before serving this to friends. I think it's really good. But we're gonna turn this into a creamy cheese, and I'm so excited about it. Just need a few pieces of it, not much. One of these bigger pieces, we'll probably use two of these. This is gonna be so good. Now, I haven't really nailed down the hard version of it yet. Um, I believe that you might be able to just let this dry. I'm not really sure. But to make the creamy, the melted version of it, very cream stretchy melted version, it's really easy. You just need a few ingredients. Now, I'm gonna do one cup of filtered water, a little over a half of a cup of potato starch. And I'm saying a little over, I'm saying like a heaping half of a cup, about a tablespoon and a half of coconut oil, about a teaspoon of olive oil. I'm gonna drop in these two blocks or so of the chow, the fermented tofu. I'm gonna make sure I get some of those juices in there too. I'm gonna turn the heat on like a low heat and then start seriously whisking. But removed it once it starts to kind of melt up and get to that stretchy type of consistency. Then we just need to bring it off the heat and continue to whisk. 
moving this around, and you can see the stretch of this stuff is unbelievable. Ah, and it's a little tough to work. I might have got it just a pinch too hot, but you gotta keep this stretching going to get it to that really nice cheese consistency. Oh, I am just loving the way that this is coming out. Now at this point here, you have a chow cheese. It's a stretchy cheese. So at this point, I'm just gonna take my ring mold and I'm gonna use a silicone spatula to help transfer this cheese into the mold. So we're just gonna cover this up, wrap it up, and I'm gonna drop this in the refrigerator for just a few hours and see what happens. I think this should dry up, it should firm up uh, to a point. Okay, so after a few hours of sitting, I know you can't, let's see. This did get, this did firm up, but it still is pretty soft. I was able to slice some sections of it off. Now it wouldn't slice into like sandwich slices. You just couldn't get it that thin. This is still very soft cheese. Uh, it has a very almost brie-like taste to it. And I'll tell you, and I'll tell you if you were to put that like on a cracker or something, I don't know if anybody would know the difference. Very spreadable, very creamy tasting. It's pretty wild. Now, as far as what this video was gonna be about was trying to nail a cheese-like flavor. I think fermented tofu has its uses. We're gonna continue using it in this series. And I believe the potato starch and coconut oil, like what Chow Creamery uses, is a very good base for like a white cheese. I have some ideas of how to use that successfully in the future. And it has a really nice cooked flavor. So that's it. That is a fermented tofu turned into a vegan cheese. Really loving the way that this video series is starting to go already, right off the bat. Mm. Now, if you don't wanna take the time to ferment your own tofu, you could buy a fermented tofu, a white fermented tofu at just about any Asian market. I'll also leave a link in the description below for my Amazon store. So you could just buy the fermented tofu and whip this cheese up here in a few minutes. Really quick, goes together really fast. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, please make sure you click the subscribe button and click this video right here. Mm. Oh, I also wanna make sure that I thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you click the link in the description below and get two months of premium membership. That's so awesome.